Imogen. Oh, shit. Oh! <laughs> and that's where we'll end. <laughs> <laughs> Exhausted, sleep comes to you quickly. And you feel the gentle touch of the tall grass against your fingers. As you find yourself walking through the beautiful green fields of the home village of Jalvan. The breeze is cool and gentle, and you can watch the horses running to this plateau valley alongside the climbing Talent Highlands. You feel the nudge on your left, turning to see the snout of Flora, your favorite mare, acknowledging this look for a snack. I reach in and give her something. Bertrand, you are wandering at a zigzag through the <laughs> streets of the Spire at night. Uh, you gotta pee real bad suddenly. <laughs> yep. Time to bless the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much dirt in the way around here. It's kind of an open street with alleys and kind of, you're, you're, you know the windowed wall's a little ways away, but you can, you can hold it or find a quick stop. Not at my age. I'm going to find a quick stop. Otherwise, it'll. Okay. So you kind of duck into the side alleyway and begin to relieve yourself, and it's a, it's a genuine relief. A little bit of moonlight that's peeking through the alley. It's obscured to your left. You suddenly sense someone standing there. Kind of glance over, and you just see a silhouette. Do I recognize this? Make a perception check with disadvantage, you drunk asshole. Oh. <laughs> Guys. Fuck it, perception. Check. Can't make out any, any details. I put my hand on my rapier hilt, mm -hmm. draw myself up to my full height, say, um, Gertrude, are you, uh, oh, I'm sorry, friend. May I, uh, can I help you? The figure takes a step closer. My, uh, my friend is, off around the corner. Can I be of some sort of uh, assistance? <clears throat> Takes another step closer. I draw my rapier. I think that's close enough. You sense this figure looking at you, and as they get closer to you, the the full height of your stance, you can tell the figure is a bit shorter than you. Poked of hood, maybe comes up to about your shoulders. <gasps> What'd you say? Is it this dick? Is it the fucking door? Is it the door? Shorter. Why don't we have a conversation? <gasps> a little further in, and you see beneath the cloak there's a flash of metal as a familiar rapier glint hits the moonlight. Further in, where? Points deeper into the alley. Okay, is there anyone with him beyond him? No, the alley itself is maybe about eight feet from side to side, and they're kind of right in the center of it, and they're about three or four feet deep into it, and you're about 10 feet deep. Oh, I, I think I'm fine. Right where I am. It seems I have you at a disadvantage, sir. Yeah. Sounds like a base. <laughs> <laughs> what could it be? In a sudden flash of 
quick movement, unnatural speed, the cloak whisks and you feel a twinge of burning pain in your chest as you look down at the hilt of the rapier that's now up against your chest. You take 12 points of piercing damage. <gasps> Okay. That's natural 20. No. <laughs> no. It is. Right there. As you glance down at it and kind of cough for it, <laughs> the blade withdraws again and goes this time into the abdomen, right up to the hilt, for 16 points of piercing damage. Just then, the wind suddenly starts to change. Harsher, colder. You turn, and your eyes find a familiar sight. The horizon, entirely consumed in red. Swirling, hungry clouds filling the sky, and coming fast. Silent flashes of lightning in the distance as you stand motionless, watching the streaks of dark crimson rake across the heavens above you, darkening it, reaching for you. Flora immediately flees. You stand, frozen, the storm reaching around and consuming you, buffeting your face, the wind growing louder and louder until you hear her voice. Run, Imogen. Run. I back up and start sprinting towards my house. You go, and you run, and you run, and you run, and you rush towards that country home which you now see darkened by the shadow of the looming storm as it continues to follow. You reach the door and tear it open, look over your shoulder to the roiling storm, and you see another figure standing where you were. At a glance, it's a, a man, older, refined, walking proudly into the Tempest before he's gone. What? As you lie bleeding in the alley, your vision begins to blur. A coldness and a peace begins to come as the figure steps and blocks the moonlight and says, So Berg Trindal it is, huh? Good night. And that's where we're gonna finish tonight's oh. episode. Oh.